Here come the big rig kids, y'all. Are you ready? Let's go. Here come the big rig kids. Roll with the big rig kids. Let's have fire in the truck to get Hello, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with Grandma Polly. I do want to apologize firstly for the inconvenience in our late start. It is on me with some technical issues over here with an update. But I do apologize for that, and I do hope you'll pardon that. But back to the show. We have a very, very exciting guest here today that's going to be talking to Grandma Polly about some of the wonderful things that she's done as well as the wonderful things that Grandma Polly is doing. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would like for you to give it up to the one and only Miss Grandma Polly. Hello, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. 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 Thank I'm coming at you from Chester, New York. I have another week up here. And I just want to thank everybody who has been following us, who joined the conversations on Thursday nights. And if you don't mind, <laughs> hey, give us some hearts, give us some loves, share it, tell your friends about it. And, you know, let's just spread love all over the place and get on this big rig truck. You know, let's get on the love truck. Um, without further ado, um, our guest this evening is just, ooh, there are so many words, um, that I could use to describe her. Um, but I want you guys to help me welcome Fanisha Locke. She's the, um, founder and the instructor of Taz Academy in Charlotte. And Phoenicia has helped me through a lot of things. Actually, she's one of the, well, she is the young lady who has helped me develop the um, workbooks. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how all of this came into play. But before I go any farther, guys, um, give Phoenicia a, a, a great big welcome. And we're going to turn it over to her to tell a little bit about herself, and then we'll go into the conversation. Welcome, Phoenicia Lock. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, it is an honor to be here, honestly. Um, I'm excited about tonight's conversation. All day I was like, okay, what are we gonna talk about? It's so much meat um, that we need to be discussing and what's coming up. And so, yeah, I started my school in 2009 um, for uh, students that you know needed a smaller setting. And I wanted to incorporate different things like um, individualized um, teaching, you know, so they would, you know, each kid have their own little curriculum because everybody learns different. So with your book, I was able to even do that. Um, you know, the questions, you know, for the ones that needed that advance, I was able to advance those questions. And for the ones that needed it to be a little, you know, more uh, who, what, when, when, why. So I'm, I'm excited about the conversation. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, thank you, Fanisha, so much. I mean, like you said, there's so much to cover. But I'm gonna tell a little bit of how it all got started with you and I. Um, I remember you posting something on Facebook about wanting to do interviews with um, people in the community who were doing things. And uh, when I said that I was interested in it, you invited me out and matter of fact, you were the first person to give me an interview on what I was creating. And we united along that way and you was the first school to actually bring my book into the curriculum of your school. And um, we've done so much together as far as book signings and community services and different stuff like that. And I was just, it was overwhelming at first, but with the personality mm -hmm. you have and the person who you are, it became calming to me because being nervous about telling people about the things that I was doing, you know, in my mind, I've never done anything like that. And I didn't want to come off as look at me. This is what I created, you know, 
mm-hmm. all of that stuff. And with you having the educational background, you just made it so relaxing for me. And I appreciate that. And with you bringing the first book in, my kids were attending, while well, my grandkids was attending another private school. And I remember when Steve brought it into Brookstone. First, you know, even with your school, we were just reading the books and having the um, conversations and me dressing up as Grandma Polly and the kids enjoyed Grandma Polly herself. But when I got into Brookstone, Steve, the head ma- was the headmaster over there at the time and he was impressed with the book but he came up with the idea he said you're doing the books why you don't have workbooks to go along with them me knowing nothing about that I could write the stories but as far as getting them approved for educational part for the school system I was like okay let's see Who can I call on? I didn't have to think long. It was an initial lot that I called on, and um, we got it done. We actually have the book certified, um, Lexile certified. These books are written on a third grade, third grade, six months level, and the goal now is to increase the age as we roll. And I think I've said a lot. I'm going to let you jump in here, Phoenicia, and start talking. Okay, so let me tell you where I was the first one to give you the opportunity. For me, um, you saved the day because it was my girlfriend and I had decided we were going to start to promote my vision, which is like a little spinoff of working with um, business owners, okay, or um, aspiring entrepreneurs. We had it all covered, you know, we was going to do the radio, this, that, and the third. But the person we had scheduled was like, oh, I can't make it. And I'm like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? So I put it on Facebook like this. Anybody want at this point, we we did an interview. And y'all remember you said, oh, I wrote a book. And I'm like, okay. And then when you said, I wrote a kid's book, I'm like, perfect. That's two ends to the middle. I remember us going on the show and me thinking, I just met you on Facebook, and here it is. What about four or five years later? Yes. We, you know, you know, you like the sister I never had. So a lot of times people Aww. think meeting on Facebook is, uh, oh, that's just you know a place where you go socialize. Well, it is, but it's a place where bonds are are developed and made. And I mean, from me, you know, you coming into the school. I think you first came. I want to think it was a summer, but I was so impressed by the activeness because I had, we started off because you had the book for the kindergarten and first grade, but it was not the real the book that my older kids are reading. So you were able to get them engaged and they were, um, and they were able to, you know, interact and understand at their level. And that was just the first book. Um, and I thought that was phenomenal. You had all the arts and crafts. And then when you moved over to my um, my older kids, it was more of a, okay, wonderful. Um, they can actually have dialogue, but you still had the music and the dance and you still kept them engaged. And then when you decided to take it on the road and I'd never been to your little small town or nothing like your town. and. And you know, it was just it was phenomenal. It was it was phenomenal. And just watching how you impacted other children, um, when we went to the library, it's it's just been ongoing and endless um of the things that you know you were able to do with the book and um and with the, with your topics being so um right now, you know, so needed right now. Um, so when we talked about doing the workbooks. I'm like, oh, girl, I got you. And I know we went back and forth and it finished it. You know, I, you need to you ain't put nothing in the subject line because I'm, I'm just so like, oh, what do you think? What do you think? So, yeah, it, it's, it's just been full force every day. And um, I, I, I really enjoyed working with the kids. That's one thing I miss about Charlotte, you know, moving to Atlanta and having to get established there because your kids was involved with so much 
of the activities in the books that I created, um, even when we did the Big Red Kid play, mm-hmm. I have people call oh, that was awesome. saying, when you're going to do that play again, and, and practically your whole school was involved, and mm-hmm. I think what made it unique during that time is because we had one school where the kids were the actors, and then we had your school that did all the choir songs and the um mm-hmm. if you guys haven't seen it it's a treat um Phen- Phenicia even had kids who were doing the sign language during the time mm-hmm. the choirs were singing and it was just so awesome the way we were able to bring those things together and, and like Phenicia said for me it's a business venture in one aspect and another aspect is a business of building communities mm-hmm. but the most i got out of it all is that Phoenicia and i became family mm-hmm. you know it, it, it's that sisterhood there we mm-hmm. hear a lot of sisterhood talk you know going on in communities and on social media about how we need to fix each other's crown and all that stuff Mm -hmm. is good when it's being said but to actually be able to come together and work together as a people that that, that's the biggest thing for uh, um i got from it all just gaining another Mm -hmm. people being able to create Mm -hmm. something positive with somebody who looks like me Mm-hmm. And we're not exactly. trying to overshadow or undershadow each other. Mm-hmm. We work together mm-hmm. in harmony. But Vanessa, mm-hmm. I would like to know, because your kids have made such a big impact on me. What impact have these books had on uh, not you, but your children? Okay, so... I, for me, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of different, um, a lot of different things. So uh, it, it's opened up conversations. So for my students that are quiet and introverts, it's hard to get them actively engaged. However, um, with the conversations being so relevant, especially when we talked about the bullying, um, there was so many different things going on. And that was such a move. Um, we were able to just talk about the, the cyber bullying as well as the bullying that was in the book and they felt a part of it because they were learning the songs and they were learning the creed and it was building their self-esteem and um i just saw a difference in a lot of things they were even quoting things out of the book quoting the um the creed um and then we had the workbook we were able to work you know work on it talk about it and with you having at the end those volunteer events, it gave them the opportunity to go in the community and do things for um, others. So it was just, it was just a lot. Um, the Christmas, when we got to Christmas time and we, you know, put our Christmas packages together, we listened to Christmas music and had our hot cocoa. And it was just, it was more than a book for them because they knew you personally. So we go to the library and pull a book off the shelf. Great. But to be able to say, oh, Grandma Polly's coming um, and we're going to ask her this or we're going to ask her that. And, um, you know, and to have that personal connection was a blessing to them. I know it was. It was a blessing to the parents, you know. So that was the that was the beauty of it all. And that's awesome. You know, you mentioned the um, Christmas uh, packages that we put together and the hot cocoa you know and different stuff like that and for me it was rewarding it was really rewarding to me because when we put the call out that we were doing care packages for the men in the women's shelter those kids and the parents they really got involved and i'll never Mm -hmm. forget it that the first year we did it and these were just the kids from between the two different schools the very first year we did it 
uh, we were able to serve 350, you know, members of the shelters. And these were from adults mm -hmm. to children, you know, and, and it was toiletries, hats, gloves, backpacks. And the fact that the children were willing to get involved, that's mm -hmm. where I received my, my excitement. The books are excited, right. to, are, are very exciting to me. But to know that the kids can read it, they can understand it, and to put uh -huh. those things into action, that's the whole purpose of it. And when you came, with, when we came with the workbooks, um, matter of fact, these workbooks, let me see if I can get it. This is the first one for the first book. And when we started talking about this, Phoenicia, I had no idea what we was getting into. I know what I wanted, right. but I had no idea it was going to turn out like this. And I'm ecstatic. This mm -hmm. program runs six weeks at a time. Uh, but my so main nice. focus, and you develop, you helped me develop that really well. My, my main focus was reading, writing, Mm -hmm. comprehension and community services and all those things are covered in each one of these workbooks because you mm -hmm. help me develop the questions you help me develop the part where they have to write you know they've taken mm -hmm. cursive and all of this stuff out of school and these kids are on the computers mm -hmm. but I, we know that the kids comprehend when they have to go back and write about each chapter after they've read those questions and mm -hmm. you just did a wonderful awesome awesome job in helping me develop this and we want you, you to tell your friends everybody who's watching your friends and family about it because you could do this as a family you could do this as a group if you're a homeschooling your kids it's um awesome and the way Phoenicia mm -hmm. helped me with those questions because y'all know I get a little grandmommish sometimes but the way the questions are written <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the way the questions yeah. are written the person who's instructing them you could do it from first grade all the way up to high school because you could mm -hmm. determine how long you want those answers to be. Your younger kids, mm -hmm. yeah, they may give you a one or two word answer. You may require your older mm -hmm. kids to answer those questions in a full sentence or full paragraph. So it's mm -hmm. so broad that anyone, you know, can work them. And I know we say children, and I know you guys are tired of me hearing this. But I keep getting that feedback where it says that it's a family book. And Kenny, I want you to jump in here because send me a finishing know the story. You probably have some questions that you want to ask. Okay. I surely do. Hello, everybody. I, I do have some questions because finishes your work is amazing. The way you put these things together. I really have to give it up for you. So there we go. <laughs> um, when my sister came and was telling me her idea about the book and everything, I, I well, it was just started with writing the book. And then as time progressed, she started elaborate, telling me all kind of things. I'm going to have workbooks with it. I'm going to, now I didn't know the whole full scope of everything. And, and uh, finally meeting you in person <laughs> is, is an awesome thing. So tell me about, uh, like, and I, I talked to Renee about it, but I wanted to hear from you, from you personally <laughs> with some of the processes and, and what entail, what kind of details went into making this happen as far as like, how did you even come up with the questions? Um, when you, when I know you read the book, but forming right. the right questions to make that happen for a curriculum, how did that process work for you? Okay, so what happened was, I think Renee went and got the, we had to figure out what level the book was on. So she okay. did all of that. We came back and she said, okay, 
it's third grade, third grade, six month. Okay. And I'm like, okay, cool. So then all you have to do is go to every, um, there's standards for um, all grades. Okay. So you have um, every, what a child should know in a particular grade. So all I did was pull the standards or we, they used to be called standards. It's called something else now, but it's all the same thing. By the end of the third grade, a student should know. And then it tells you. So I created the questions based on what the students needed to know by the end of third grade. And from there, um, some of them were open-ended because I know as a teacher, the kids don't like writing. So um, Ms. Renee came up with, okay, why don't we take a picture out of the book, let them talk about it, and then they can reference it. So you can always look at the book and for a third grader, fourth grader that's that gives them um ideas and then they're already reading the book which it, um so they can reference what they read and that was to hopefully build on that writing component that the kids um struggle with and then we had some um multiple choice questions which was good because it gives them an opportunity to go back in the text find the answer so all of these are are skills that the kids use anyway on just regular reading passages we just expounded it to the book. And so you might have chapter, let's say five and six together. So they know they're gonna go back to either five or six and find those answers. Um, and it, it narrows it down. And okay. then the way the book was workbook is set up, um, they have the teacher that goes in and the teacher actually goes over the answers and they have a group discussion about it. Okay. That's that's awesome, man. So with with your academy, I'm assuming that you've done a lot of this already and and there with your academy, Task Academy. So it was Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I have. It was definitely like and, a, and this, well, I, Yeah. I, and I enjoyed it because I felt it was personal. And I can't tell you how late some nights where me and Miss Renee was up at oh my goodness, uh what one o'clock in the morning because she don't she don't sleep that much at night i, don't yeah, I know she's a night owl yeah and we're trying to get deadlines and i'm like look you not grandma polly tonight you I need you, to, you know and and it was it was cool you know and um she was like well, don't send me no messages at no 7 30 8 o'clock in the morning i'm not gonna respond to you so here, here's the thing i don't know if she told you one summer she had this wild hair I'm gonna do summer camp. Never again. She was like, I'm <laughs> yeah, right. I can't okay. do it, Nisha. I can't do it. <laughs> she literally toward the end of the summer, she would come in and go, I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. Wow. <laughs> it was so funny. Man. It was great though. It was great. We had a we had an awesome time together. That's we awesome. Really did. I know uh, she'll come back and tell me about all the things she want to do too, and I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> but let's yeah. just. Yeah. I want to. I want to know a little bit more about about. Uh, also, like I, you just told us the process and how it happened or, and whatnot. But with the children, I know we're trying to get the kids reading. We're trying to eliminate illiteracy. Um, and we're trying to give them uh, a consciousness that they can build off of a, a pure foundation. I know. Um, what are, are some of the other elements you think can go into that as well when it comes to these books? Into, uh, into as the, and what do you ask me? Uh, what, what some I of the other elements to get them to to read on their own or even to engage with their parents. Um, we know we put it out there and say, you know, you can read it with your child and, and that engagement is good. But for the child to take that initiative of himself or herself, what are some of the things that, that uh, you think can, can uh, be put in that as well to, to make them have that initiative for themselves to, to uh, keep reading, keep becoming better and not because the parent isn't going to be there all the time, you know. So right. for them to just keep that that growing bud in them you know what i mean i do um okay. let me tell you what i had suggested to um grandma polly a couple years ago um i suggested that we put them on like um like on youtube or you know how you used to have those read-along books when we were kids yeah and i said um that for for, for a child that's not proficient in reading 
that would be ideal because now you're looking at the words and you're listening to it but you're reading with your eyes and you're not wow. reading at a fast pace so then once you do that then what happens is that y'all can go back and let's say well a lot of times i do a pre-read so for my kids that are not as advanced in reading mm -hmm. i'll read with them the day before okay so when you're reading with them the day before whenever they get to class or when they get whole group they're more confident in their reading and because the books are already interesting if they were at home let's say you know mom's cooking um you know dad's working late whatever the case may be they can plug their ears in go to youtube listen to chapter one i my kids now fifth grade listen to it follow along with their eyes and then they can go to that workbook and still answer those questions and if it's something that the teacher's doing in class, now when they go to class, they're actually prepared to read and not feel embarrassed when they're called on because they've already had a glimpse of what it is that they're going to see. So if I had a, a vision for um, the books, that would be my vision um, to grow it, to make it so that it's not only um, good for the, the fluent reader, mm -hmm. but it's also um, advantageous for the reader that's not as fluent got you and and getting it in their heart as opposed to just their mind so that right. yeah definitely right. that is awesome so uh, i just want to know a little bit more about you if i may <laughs> in in taz that's academy right. how right. how many kids are attend your school how big is your school now we have uh us about 25 because we okay. have some that are online and so, because I've always wanted to keep it small. Now, people have challenged me for years. We started in 2009 with three students. Um, you need to get, you know, you need to, you know, make it uh, larger. You need to uh, make it a charter school. I had met with one of my parents um, last week, and she was like, you know, I've um, been to other schools, but you are so accessible to the students and that's what my vision is and mm. so i have to operate in my calling you know, you know i feel like i probably could impact more people but to the point where it's such a family setting that's why people can come in and and just jump right in and, and be so loved and so welcome because like there's nothing for my kids to some of them are watching now so hello to <laughs> my students that are watching give it um, up but <laughs> for my baby give it up for my baby um, but I told him, I'm like, listen, you know, write about five sentences of what you learned, um, what you learned about me. Because they, I never told them that I wrote, did a workbook. I just come to work every day and give them a hard time and expect <laughs> the best out of them. Um, and, and it works for us. So I don't want a large environment. I want that personal, I love Attention. you. You know, what do you need? that i love that you know? yes and the thing about it is it spoils them because when they go from me to another atmosphere it's no more texting the teacher it's no more calling you know it's no more of that and it's almost like the best kept secret mm. um it's so unrealistic to us like a parent can relax to it that's yeah. what i wanted that's awesome i wanted that. them to that is definitely and we've awesome. had some great people come through, you know, some great people. Um, Grandma Polly, we have, we've had um, people that have, other people that have written, but matter of fact, Grandma Polly, somebody came in that was teaching my kids how to write a book. This one, I had more middle school students. It was Ooh. just awesome. It's just, it's just how it's set up. Okay, so what age, what ages? When Omar, when Omar came in, Omar Tyree? Yeah. Omar yeah. Tyree? Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. So, what are what are your ages that 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 uh? This year, well, we're we're, we're supposed to be kindergarten through eight. Oh, okay. To be perfectly honest with you, I like kindergarten through fifth, pre K through fifth. Um, so this year, um, I have five or no, I have seven fifth graders. So next year, if the parents choose, I will add sixth grade because of them. Um, if they have to transition somewhere else, I'll be 
bid them a farewell. Um, but they've been with me. A lot of them have been with me since they were four. So it's wow. going to be hard for them to separate. And I'm going to be honest with you. My students that have been with me since they were kindergarten, first grade, they're so they're so like me. You know, they don't have to be motivated. They just know what the expectation is. And gotcha. it's, it does well for the kids that are coming in because they've already set the standard for this is what we do. And so the kids that didn't like doing homework and didn't like reading is now looking at their peers going, oh, okay, this is the expectation. So they do a lot of peer building and peer tutoring, which helps. And That's again, cool. I hate to keep referencing Grandma Polly, but those workbooks require them to work together um and it's just a beautiful thing yeah, i'm looking sounds... forward to getting up when she gets on vacation i'm looking forward to this what is it fourth book fifth fourth book it'll be her fifth. fifth yeah okay yeah. i'm looking forward to it i i know uh, yeah. uh and um we're going to have to just like we did with the other ones this one is going to be easier because okay. when we did these workbooks we did these three workbooks back to back to back. They all came out at the same time. Whoa. Because yeah. we didn't have any, I didn't have any intentions of doing workbooks until, right. you know, Steve brought it to my attention and I was like, okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and do this. But now that we have the fourth book and the only reason the workbook for the fourth book is not done yet is because Phoenicia has been busy working on her school and writing her own book. Yeah, I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's awesome. And so many other things that she's been working on. But, um, of course, because, you know, Kenny, I told you, I said, with this one, dealing with racism... I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do the workbook and you and several other people was like, you definitely need a workbook. Need to do the workbook, yeah. This one, you know, so yeah. that's something we'll be working on soon, Phoenicia, when I get back to Charlotte. I mean, to okay. Atlanta. And um, just go from there, but um, you and your knowledge and your wisdom and just you as a person has really been a blessing to me with all that has been created. And I appreciate that. Well, that is awesome. That That is awesome. I, I need to take my hat off to you too, Phoenicia, because I didn't know what went into it, but when I saw the product, I was like, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is amazing, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's, and, it's, mm -hmm. and it's so funny. Uh, what's her name, Phoenicia? We have to shout her out too, because when I, when I started creating the, um, puzzles and stuff she was the one who was able to format all of that for us we can't leave her out um what's her, her name michelle michelle yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah she was hard at it i love it. yeah i'll definitely yeah for sure for sure and she's in yeah. atlanta now so you know really yes we're definitely gonna have to connect um it's um a, a a whole process and it was so funny when um going back to when Phoenicia talked about those late night hours and Phoenicia would send stuff over. I love you to death, Phoenicia, but you drove me crazy. I know. I know. Because she would send stuff to the email, but it would have no title, no nothing to it. And then now I'm going back to look for it. And I'm like, okay, Venetia, what date you sent this? What what chapter was it that you sent? But um, we got through it. We got through yeah. it. It was and an adventure, but it was an awesome adventure. Yeah, very much so. And I, I, I think because, Renee, a lot of them, when I'm telling you, my eyes were crossing because I was so tired, but I was so determined. Like, I'm not gonna be the weakest link. I'm not gonna be the weakest link because I know that you're up at night working and I'm like, well, I gotta get this done because I have to, you know, go to work. So I'm like, let me just send it. And I never even thought about, okay, this is chapter whatever. These are these quick. I never thought about it. So my apologies for putting you through the ringer. 
<laughs> Can I uh, um, say something? I think Renee might have. You froze up. Oh, she's still there. She's uh, you get you're getting a lot of comments, Miss Vanessa. <laughs> Students, she said, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> my okay. teacher's on a oh. podcast." <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of comments yeah, coming in. Those are your babies. That's yeah, awesome. Those, those are your babies. That, yeah, that's yeah. I want to tell you. I, go ahead. I just want to take a moment to shout them out. Uh. You know, it, there's a lot that goes into it, and and uh, one of them asked the question about to Renee, Grandma Polly, are you there? Did we lose you? Cause you're frozen. I don't know if she's uh. I think we may have lost her, but uh, they wanted to know about when you were writing the books. Um, of course the character building and all of that. But uh, they wanted right. to know more about the character building. And, and the question that I want to ask you is how were you able to, to um, frame those questions to where it would get people to think about the characteristics of the character? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I think we well, just well, lost her. Already... You can go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish. You can okay. go ahead. Yeah, she... because of the um, way the book was written and set up it was very easy um to um because what happens is the way are you back is she back yeah she's back okay um so the way it was set up is she was the books are so the characters are so defined in the book it made it easier for me to go okay what makes um this person different so i'm like uh, and they have so many different backgrounds so you have um the, the child that had sickle cell. So I could then extend it to what we used to call um, text to self. So what happens is some people say, oh, well, my sister has it or my brother has it. And so they were able to identify with it based on their personal experience. So those are the things that I was considering when writing those questions and getting those characters involved with their personal life um once a person can identify with something personally they can take it to another level mm-hmm. and that's what my always taking things to the next level in your mental mind gotcha that y- y- yes and um i'm going i'm finna answer i think michelle is asked the question of how did you come up with the characters yeah and when Phoenicia talked about sickle cell and it becoming personal, um, Michelle, I came up with the characters. Um, when I decided to do this, um, I was a truck driver at the time. And traveling the country, you know, I saw people from all different ethnic backgrounds, um, uh, different adversities, and so many um, other things. So when I decided to do this, I know I did not want all the children to look alike. I wanted to put a message out that we live in a world where 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 we all don't look alike and we all don't have the same issues, but we all do have issues. So when I did Maria, um, Maria is the young lady um, Phoenicia reference to. Maria is Hispanic, and I purposely gave Maria sickle cell because in the African African American community, somehow, some way, we got lost in it, thinking that only uh, black people have sickle cell, and that's not true. It's people of color, and um, I started. I have a friend in Charlotte who's Hispanic, and she's a grown lady, and she has sickle cell. But I didn't meet her until afterwards. And then with um, Corey, I thought about our children who um, have been adopted, and I made Corey adopted so that when kids read these books, they can relate to the character. Um, Corey is Caucasian, but he's an adopted child. Um, Naoki, Naoki um, is Asian, and we as a society has this mindset that all Asians take care of their families. So I did it to dispel the myth that 
even Asian people have problems too. Um, Sasha and Caden, they're a set of twins and they, their grandmother has um, legal custody of them, temporary custody, and their mother died during childbirth. And I purposely did that because we as a society, again, thinks, think that just black women have children and somebody else is raising their children and the children are with the grandparents because the mother was just out there having children. But their mother actually died during childbirth and the dad was in the military. So Grandma Polly ended up with temporary custody of them. And it showed that he did not abandon them. It's just that he was in the military at that time and these kids could not be with them. But, you know, they're still a family. And that's how I came up with the characters. Mm -hmm. um, then I didn't want to do hip hop kids. I didn't want anything to do with rap music, this, that, or whatever, because kids are already overly exposed to that. So I came up with the kids, but I didn't know what I was going to do with them. And then I decided we were going to create Sapphire, which is the big truck. I was working in a male dominated industry. And I made Sapphire female just because of that. And I made Sapphire the voice of Wisdom Kenny because women are smarter than men. And <laughs> that's debatable it's debatable <laughs> after I created the truck and was talking to my grandkids about it you know I was talking to them through the whole process of what I was doing because it was because of them that actually gave me the idea to do this because they would call and I'm on the road and they'd be like, Grandma, when you coming home? Grandma, what you gonna bring us? You know, what you bought us this time? And you know, being grandmama, you've been away from them so long, you want to have something to give to them when you get home. And I was like, I mean, that's fine and good too, but we have to teach these kids how to give back, to not be on the receiving end all the time. So during the process of this, um, my grandkids asked me one day, they was like, well, Grandma, you got the kids, you got the truck. Well, who's going to drive the truck? The kids can't drive the truck. So then I went into the idea of, okay, I'll drive a truck. We'll just create a grandmother, you know, who's that big mama in the neighborhood that helps, you know, with all the kids in the community. And I gave her name, Grandma Polly because my grandma was born Polly Myers and she'd always tell us the story of once she started school the kids would call her Polly the parrot and she didn't like that and she just started writing Pauline Myers on her paper even when we when um I was grown and she was trying to get her birth certificate and we keep sending, you know, we keep trying to find it. And we would send in Pauline Myers. There was no birth certificate. So once we put Polly Myers, she was able to receive her birth certificate. And she was born June uh, the 15th, 1916. Because, you know, they didn't keep real good records back then. And you just can't go to school and write a different name on a paper now when the teacher calls you that but they did that back then so she named she renamed herself when she was six years old <laughs> and that's how i came up with grandma polly um sapphire the truck is called sapphire because my my grandfather who raised me never called me by my name i don't ever remember a day that that man has ever called me by my name he has always called me sapphire Wow. And that's how I came up with the characters. Yes, yeah, right. so characters are based in in a factual history, nonetheless. Yeah. Yes, that is awesome, man. You have a, a lot of a lot of uh, tweets and loves and hearts coming in, um, Miss Benicia. You have a ton as well. The kids are shouting out to you, and uh, uh -huh. just want to 
I just want to take this moment to thank them for joining us tonight and, and uh, shout them out a little bit. Uh, their names, Pearl Dawson, Latasha Collins, there's just a few of them. Um, where's uh, Michelle, Kimberly, <laughs> Carol, uh, man, it, it's it's a lot of them. Um, and that, that's a testament to, to you, Miss Venetia, and, and your, uh, the way you yeah. are, are teaching and, and uh, well, it, it, what you're doing is is actually giving them a culture, a way of life, <laughs> you know, right. and and right. Uh, that's awesome. And they're responding to it with love, so that's a beautiful thing. So yeah, they really are. Yes, uh, Grandma Polly. Yes. Uh, do you have a question here? What year? I know, I know the years, but you need to answer this. What year did your books come out in sequential I order? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> Um, hold on. My first book came out, which this ain't the first one because I don't have that one with me right now. Um, I feel like it was yesterday, but this one, this one came out in 2018, the one dealing with bullying. Mm -hmm. uh, the one Meet the Big Red Kids came out in 2017. Um... Uh, Daddy's Home came out in, I think it was like a year later, um, 19? 2019, and this one, the new one now, just came out a month ago. In 2021. And, um, the messages are deep, the messages are personal, some of it is... A slight variation of some of the things that I've gone through and the majority of the messages uh, is exactly what people are living today and what they're dealing with and what they're facing and um, we as a people you know when we read these stories um, now I'm going to you Kenny because you've had the privilege of reading book four. Phoenicia haven't read that one yet. Oh boy. <laughs> so hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. You telling me Miss Phoenicia has well I've I've read all the other ones too and I love them. I love them. But you haven't you haven't hit number four yet? I have not hit number Ooh. four, let me tell you. And it's, it's funny because I, I didn't want to cut her off, but she was telling me the content of it. And typically, I cater the books to the Lextile, which is third, fourth. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of my third grade readers um, are advanced, so I can let some of my second graders um, in, in the past read it and they understand it. I don't know who, all my students that are listening, when we get back from Christmas break, we're all going to read it, my third graders and my fifth graders. Mm. And I will modify it based on the, the the content. You know, that's my my plan is to modify it. Okay. So I'm excited about it. It's going to make sure I get a copy in my hand. But I don't know if I want to read it before my babies read it. Maybe we'll all read it together. together? We'll just discuss it. You know, what do you recommend? I, I think after I've read it, <laughs> I I um I I think I think every child should read it as well as every adult really. I okay. uh, um I think there's nothing that's not too much for them because they experience things already and when people right. try to sweep stuff under the rug and and it don't make sense. I know as a kid myself on something like okay, but with that said, I think the book is really going to open up questions and an insight. I, it took me on a emotional roller coaster. <laughs> okay. I was okay. I was happy. I was sad. I was angry. I was um, uh, forgiving. I was. I felt okay. every emotion, every emotion imaginable. You're gonna feel through this. <laughs> you're gonna feel it. Oh wow! But I don't want to give it away. But. It's it's okay. it ends beautifully though. <laughs> it ends so beautiful. Okay. So my question, Mr. Kenneth, is this. Should I wait until the first of the year and read it whole group or should I read it first and then read it with them? 
Uh, I think first. you read it first. You read it first. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I, I read it. I read it actually in one day. <laughs> I couldn't really? put it down. Yeah, I, I couldn't put the book down. I was just like, oh my god, this is a, a page. Okay. You know how they say a page turner is really right. a, okay. a one at all. I mean, I, I loved her other books too. Don't get me wrong, but I took longer right. to read those. You know, but this one I right. literally couldn't put down. I was just like, oh man. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> and then you okay. want to see what's okay. going to happen okay. next. This and This particular okay. book, yeah, the other books are 10 chapters. This, particular, this new book is actually 12 chapters. And they're longer okay. chapters. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely, you ain't going to want to put it down. I mean, it's 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 right. it's beautiful. The way it's written, it's truthful, it's beautiful, it's it's righteous. It's it's she hit everything. She hit it. She hit it. Like and they say, Hank Aaron knocked them home. She knocks them home with grand slams with this one. Oh oh, that, that's right. It's the fourth book, so it would be a grand slam. All right. <laughs> okay. And, and, and. I okay. recommend you reading it first. Yeah. Because I know you. Okay. And the emotions that's going to come from you. The kids don't need to see that first. From you, yeah. From you. Okay. But then and again. For you to deal with them. I, I gotta yeah. I, I need to say one more thing. Uh-huh. I um you know I'm a man, so I don't cry, but I was misty. I was misty. I was like, what is okay. this? It must be a cloud in my head. Okay. Right. Okay. Because you, you, you okay. rain was falling from my eyes. I know, right? Okay. Okay. And you know what else I was thinking? Um, Grandma Polly, another thing I was thinking, if I go ahead and read it first, then I can develop the questions based Why on what I've read. Mm -hmm. And what I can do is I can shoot them to you and we may do it twofold. By the time I finish it and the first of the year comes, I may already have your workbook. Gotcha. And then you can just add the pictures and the rest of the stuff with it. You know what I'm saying? We may just do it gotcha. that way. You see that? Gotcha. So, I'm um, Kimberly well Weddington, who's that Phoenician? You know her? Yeah, I do. Um, Her son is old big head Caleb. Now, <laughs> our son is Caleb. And I don't think, um, at last year, I don't think we read any of your books. He came to, new to the school last year. His mom and I have been friends, oh my God, probably 17 years. So okay. that's her, um, that's her baby boy. And okay. so he's a fifth grader. So um, we'll have to make sure he gets the book. Yes, um, that is so cool. Um, and hopefully by the time you get done with um, towards the end of it or whatever, um, I, 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 I'm willing to come in. Are you serious? No, I'm not serious. I'm serious. You <laughs> gonna come all the way from Atlanta to see us? <sighs> I, you know, that's where I got my okay. start. You know, you okay. can't forget where you came. I cannot, I will not forget my start. Okay. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. And yeah. I'm going to ask you this too, um, Grandma Polly. I know December is right around the corner and you always have your celebrations. Well, because of COVID, I don't think right. you've been doing that. How are you going to celebrate this year? Are you going to have a zoom party or have you even given it any consideration um right she now, gonna she gonna eat off my plate <laughs> okay help me what you mean by that before i give finish the answer what you mean Kenny? <laughs> help me huh what you mean eat off your plate help me with I'm, that I'm, I'm cooking for you oh wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two different pages <laughs> Just talking about, well, you know, since COVID came, we didn't even touch that one. And, and okay. you've always contributed oh. to it too, Kenny. Um, every year in December, because that's when the first, first book came out, 
we would always have the Big Red Kids celebration. Where we would have the big cake, the punch and stuff, and that's where the kids did the drive mm. for the shelters. But um, since COVID shut us down last year, you know, we hadn't been able to do that. Um, Phoenicia, I'm thinking, and I know when I get back home, I'll have that week to sit down and come up with answers. Because I'm putting it out here now for all of you guys who are watching. I'm going to need y'all help. Um, I have a family in Atlanta. Um, an organization reached out to me. Um, the kids are 8, 9, and 11, if I'm not mistaken. I actually have their sizes. Uh, their mom was murdered last month. Oh, no. Um, domestic violence. The mom was murdered, and that's one of the families that I decided to sponsor for the holidays. Okay. There's three boys with no parents. Mm -hmm. And that just broke mm -hmm. my heart. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this, Grandma Polly, and one of my kids can drop in in the chat. This month, um, matter of fact, I need one of my students to tell me, tell me exactly what this month is for us. Mm -hmm. Hurry up, chat. What is this month? Did anybody I like drop uh, anything this yet? this comment right here. Uh, they ask such sadness. How can we help as well? I think. Oh, Lenique. Wow. Um, you know what I want to do because these are three children and they're with the grandma um what they asked me for was a coat and a toy we're, we're gonna go beyond that it's not just gonna be a coat and a toy i'm looking for co uh, brand new coats i will find out you know what it is that they like to play with whether it's an Xbox game or whatever. Um, maybe some tennis shoes, a couple of shirts and pants. But I also want to provide the full dinner for that holiday. Okay. So when, my kids when drop I don't have to do anything. Okay, so my they dropped in the chat. This month is yes. acts of kindness. And we've been it. trying to figure out. We've been trying to figure out what we were gonna do as an act of kindness. So Ooh. they already know that since that's what we're doing for this month, we'll discuss tomorrow and next week what acts of kindness we can do to support your endeavors. Because we hadn't made a decision yet. So I that, you just made our decision. And that is so awesome because next week um, we have Aldinia Lawrence. Um, she just renewed her. She just released her new book last week, and um, she's telling her story. Um, she was in a, a domestic abusive relationship. Two children from that marriage. She got out. The husband remarried, and he killed that wife. So she's gonna be here next week. What? Oh, we got it again. Yes, domestic violence. We're having that conversation next week. Wow. That's going to be good. Yep, she's just re she released her new book um, last Saturday, as a matter of fact. And um, it became personal to me. I never experienced domestic violence. But I remember this young lady as a child. We all grew up in the same church. Her sister graduated high school with me. And as she tells her story, it started at the age of 18. So see, our teens need to know too, you're out here dating is not just married people. Domestic violence can come from just you dating someone. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. Yes. absolutely. And um, yeah, I went there with that one, but that's that, that that's my holiday thing this year, Phoenicia, because those boys, I can't even imagine. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, what that's what we'll do. We'll get with you 
um, and we'll start sending information to your site because most of my students are on their parents' Facebook page because uh -huh. they're not old enough. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get together next week and then we'll start coordinating with you. We'll get together and figure out. Now, when you say dinner, are you talking Thanksgiving or are you talking Christmas? Um, I'm looking at because the organization reached out to me for Christmas. But depends okay. on what we bring in. I would love to do Thanksgiving dinner and then shower them at Christmas also with the um, stuff, you know. Nice. If that's possible. Okay. And go from there. Okay. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, so who has the kids now? The grandmother. The grandmother. Grandma Polly. Wow. The, the, the grandmother. <laughs> act, yeah. The, the, and in so many instances, and that's why I created Grandma Polly the way I did. Mm. Because in so many instances, it's not that these women out here having kids and the grandmama's taking them. It's situations right. like this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is are they here in Atlanta? The grandparents are overwhelmed because they're grieving through whatever happened. And they have the kids not really understanding what's going on and the kids are grieving too. So it's just so much involved in there okay. to any way, you know, we can do something to help. I'm always, hey, yeah. Because they had other kids who were in families, this, that, or whatever. But when I heard about this particular family, I was like, give them to me. So so are yeah. they here in Atlanta or, or Charlotte? Yes, they're they're in here Atlanta. in Atlanta? Okay. Mm -hmm. They're okay. in Atlanta. Gotcha. And you know yep. we have a, 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 a charity to Angel Funds. That mm -hmm. we uh, our main focus is single dads and grandparents who are taking care of kids. So yes. I'll definitely be looking into that to see what we can do uh, okay. to contribute to the cause. You know, we got it. Things are not going to erase their pain and their hurt. Yeah, but just for them to know that other people care about what they're going through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you may just give them that joy, even if it's just for a moment. That drive, yeah. Right. Yeah, but Miss Phoenicia, you are amazing tonight. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us. I mean, it was very enlightening to hear some of the things you shared with us tonight, and and I do apologize again for the slow start. I had, you know, but thanks for your patience. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. And Miss Grandma Polly, you have any final thoughts about tonight? Like I said, like I always say, thank you, Kansas, for being my man in the background. People always see the stuff up front. They never know what's going on behind. It's just like they saw That's the right. workbooks. They never saw know the what's fact going that Kanisha was there in the background helping me get those things together. I'm doing so all I want to thank both of you guys for being the shoulder for me to stand on. Yeah, and absolutely. it's not just about me it's about getting the message out and lifting our community it's not about me let's get together make it work and get it done and I appreciate you guys so much if you're watching and you have friends out there and you're not following the Big Red Kid organization page do so because we got some great things that's um coming up that we haven't announced yet and we have those things that we're working on and follow that page you know tell your friends about it have them come in and follow the page too um and i want to say this for this year, and i'm not being mean you know like we get out there and we follow the stars we follow all of these people who are making millions let, let, let's put a little change to that. Let's start following some of these people who are really making a difference. Absolutely. Not just me, Absolutely. anybody else out there who's doing great. Let's follow them too. Yeah, true. And, and I have one already, more thing. I wanted it to be longer. Aww. Uh, one more thing. 
can you tell uh -huh. my students how they can get shirts or any type of uh you know hats or anything that you might have to offer right um we have right now i have t-shirts and i'm limited on t-shirts because of covid okay the, the companies that i was using every time i go in for my sizes and my color either they have one size available and not the other so that makes it kind of difficult but we're getting ready to do some stuff with the shirts when we get back now if they want to get the book on the bottom of this the website is there they can purchase the books now but the books won't be mailed out. i won't start mailing books again until november 1st Okay. But they is can that all and order them because that's going to give me a week to get back home and get things set up and settled um i actually have books at home but i won't mail any before november 1st um we have workbooks we have the books it's all on that site um i have my jacket done and i'm looking for someone who can like mass produce my jackets with the embroidery on them because that the embroidery kenny you saw the jacket in person yeah. and um he was excited about that too yeah it's um, nice very and nice those are the things that i'm gonna try to get together that week after i get home and then there'll be a bigger announcement about that but I just want to thank you all again. I want to thank the guests who came in and commented and give us some hearts, guys. Share it amongst your friends and tune in next week. Because next week is going to be <laughs> an sad. awesome show. It's going to be an awesome show. It's going to be, be uplifting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It's going to have the hills and valleys, but it's going to end beautifully because we're going to yes. be lifting each other up. Yes, y'all come yeah, on over little. and let's give Val some love and hopefully her message will so, help someone else who's in that situation to realize what they're going through and get out. Yes, exactly. Miss Venetia, how many kids did you say you had? It's about 25 altogether. 25? Okay. All right. All right. All right. That is awesome. Well, without any further ado, we thank you so much for joining us, Miss Venetia, and we'd love to have you thank back because I'd love to hear more thank about you. definitely you, your your whole school. You know that that's awesome what you're doing. And oh, I wanted to make the point that uh, I, I I had read up on some things about schools, and there was a school where the teacher they have they have them from kindergarten all the way till they graduate from high school. So they're never like, mm -hmm. never not like they, they have a true relationship. And that's just, it, it looks like that's what you have with your students, too. And I just want to commend right. you on that. I think that is wonderful, beautiful, because every time you change in teachers every eight months, you know, it, it's it's like you all, right. you're always starting over. You know, you're always starting over right. to build a rapport. But hats off to you, Miss Venetia. That is awesome. And I, 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 and one quick thing is mm -hmm. because, and what Kenny just said, and what you do from pre K all the way up to fifth through eighth grade or however high they go. Be, that being said, and not saying your kids, but the concept gives the kids stability. And sometimes mm -hmm. school is the only thing that they have that's stable in their lives. Right. It so, does. So right. that's the awesome Agreed. thing. Thank that you. That is awesome. Thank you. So hats off to you, Miss Venetia. I got to give you some love. <laughs> yes. And we want to thank all the, all the wonderful friends that joined us in the Facebook chat. There's so many, so many beautiful messages and, and things that are coming through that I know Grandma Polly is going to go through and answer them. Uh, but without that being said, thank you again. We look to see you. Thank you. You come back whenever you want to. Definitely. <laughs> After I read the book. After Def I read the fourth book. Okay. Sounds like yes. a purpose. Okay. Sounds like a purpose. All right. That's right. With no further ado, everybody, right. thank you for joining us. We love you. Love you guys. Do enjoy yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -hoo!
But it's not fun and hard to run with a disability. 